I still learn new things about my grandfather every day. One of those things I love most is the drop. This is probably one of the most beautiful chairs I have ever seen. And I've always thought it was a shame that it wasn't in production. The SAS Hotel gave my grandfather carte blanche to do everything, cutlery, furniture, and lamps. It was an incredibly wonderful project. There is no doubt that the drop is closely related to the swan and the egg chair. That's quite clear. We talked a lot about how to do this, or indeed, whether to do it at all. Could we make the drop chair out of plastic? Was that right? Was it a good idea? Would we devalue my grandfather's reputation? We usually have some kind of documentation about the original design. What were the correct dimensions? How was it constructed? We usually find answers to these questions in the product drawings. The product drawings capture the heart of a chair's design, and without this, all we're left with are differing opinions on how things are supposed to look. But there were no drawings. So we were kind of stuck. We didn't have anything that described the curves precisely, or showed the chair's exact original form. It was quite a shock that the drawings didn't exist, and in the beginning we didn't really know where to start. Fortunately, we had an actual log drop that we could remove the upholstery from. I mean, this is how we got down to the bare shell and found the original form. Once we had this form, we scanned it and used a CNC mill to create a one-to-one -one model. When you compare a model to the original, however, things almost never match just right. So the next thing we did was to recreate the original chair's seat and backrest in the model. So we ended up with an exact copy. The whole process of moving from a faithful copy of the chair's form to production actually takes quite a while. You start with the chair's exterior geometry and work out the technical details based on this architecture. Since we didn't have any original drawings, we needed to find some other way to find out how it was constructed inside. We couldn't pull apart the original chair we were allowed to borrow, so we had to x-ray it. The x-rays showed how the original had actually been made. Since we were transforming the drop into a plastic chair, we had to use a different construction. The development team designed a layer between the two shells into which the legs could be anchored. When we had all the final production components, we assembled them together just as we would do in production. Then we brought the chair into our laboratory and subjected it to the same load and structural integrity tests all our chairs must pass. When the first prototype was assembled, we put it on a podium in our warehouse and invited people to have a look at the very first drop. They loved it. I really hope and believe that people will accept it with open arms because it's a gorgeous little chair that inspires deep affection. It's a happy chair. It evokes such joy you just can't be angry with it when you look at it. In fact, you can only smile. It's a sculpture with a very simple form. The elegance of the legs construction, the way they join together at the center of the chair's base, transform the drop into a little work of art.